Hi, my name is Greg McLean. I'm the Customer Support Training Manager for Rural Energy Enterprises, and today we are going to go through an OM180. Customer complaint was the fact that the piece of equipment kept using hydronic fluid. For some particular reason, he couldn't keep the pressure up in the boiler. His system is tight. He feels that it's the piece of equipment. So what we've done here today is we've gone and we've put a gas pressure test kit on here. We've um, valved off the bottoms cap the side. Here I pumped this up to 100 pounds of pressure about two hours ago and I can see right now by looking at this that we're already down to 70 pounds. Now I need to go around and soap my various fittings to make sure that I'm not leaking some place else which I've done and so I need to replace the heat exchanger in this particular piece of equipment. The customer did bring it in with his start collar stuck on here and when our start collar is stuck there's an o-ring that goes right around through here. And this O-ring, it gets some carbon and some other stuff built up to it. So a lot of times if we just take a propane torch and we're just gonna go along and we're gonna heat this up, we can already start to see it start to smoke there a little bit. When this piece is stuck on here, you gotta take your torch and you gotta heat that up. You gotta soften that carbon up in there to get that to come off. That needle's falling some more. So that, that definitely has confirmed to us that you know, we do have a heat exchanger problem in here. We're gonna to have to go ahead and strip this unit all the way down. Uh, when I am doing the pressure testing, I always use a boiler drain down here at the section right here. And the reason is this makes it very, very easy to go ahead and just blow my air on out of here. We definitely do not want to take this device off of here with any pressure inside this particular piece of equipment. Right now I got about 60 pounds of pressure in there. If I spun that fitting off of there, it would shoot that fitting all the way across the wall at a high rate of speed, and that's how people get hurt. So if we have our valve down here, it certainly makes it easy. I just blew my charge, okay? So that really is gonna make it much, much easier to go ahead and work on stripping this particular piece of equipment down. Here we go, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna, gonna uh, take my uh, tester off, I'm gonna take my caps off. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take all this apart right here. And so uh, we're just gonna let the tape run as I'm doing this and away I go. My next step that I wanna do is I'm getting ready to take this particular piece of equipment apart. And here's my service ticket. And I always like to um, keep my service ticket handy um, so that if I need to write any notes down or additional parts I need to add, then, then I have my service ticket right there. It makes it nice and easy for me. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna remove my control panel cover. Okay, now that we have the cover off of this, we're gonna unplug the lamp circuit board. Okay, and that's gonna allow us to go ahead and remove our top. So here we have our lamp circuit board disconnected. We got the cover off the front. So we're just gonna go around here and take our series of screws off of here. Now that I've um, got the, the lamp circuit board disconnected, wire poked down inside, so I'm gonna lift from the back. I'm gonna come over the top, I'm gonna come forward, and then I'm gonna go ahead and free all my wires up here, and I'm just gonna slip my top off. I flip this over and I'm looking inside right here, and look at this piece of equipment. Okay, and what I'm looking at right here is I'm looking at this amount of soot stain that's going around this top portion right here. So I know not only do I have a leaking heat exchanger, I maybe have something else going on inside this piece of equipment that's going to require looking at. Okay, when I have this off right here, never take this and set this down like this because of our temperature selector knob in the front right here, if we set it down like that, then it's gonna break that knob inside there or the potentiometer. So when we take this off, we definitely wanna set this off to the side someplace where it's nice and safe. Now that we have the top removed, we're gonna to continue to remove the cabinet from the outside of the piece of equipment because we are gonna replace the heat exchanger inside. And so I'm just gonna continue on right here with taking this particular cover off of this, this piece of equipment. It really is quite easy to do, okay? And we're gonna be over here on the burner side right here also. And so we're gonna go ahead right now and we're just gonna disconnect all of our various wires in here so that we can have a nice free panel inside. 
And don't worry about being confused on how the wires go back in there. Because with all Toyotomi products, they have an alphabetical letter on there, and there's an alphabetical letter on the board that corresponds with where that pin clip goes. And also on the back side of the panel is a picture schematic of the unit to help you with that placement. And it's going to give you the pin number connection and everything up above. So this uh, is designed for success, okay? Now that I've got all my wires unplugged, I'm gonna go ahead and pull my harness out ahead here just to make that easier for me. And I'm gonna continue taking this particular piece of equipment apart. The first one of these that I changed out actually took me quite a bit of time because I wasn't doing it in a thoughtful process. And so if I'm doing this in a thoughtful process, that means disconnecting my wires, pulling my cover off, and thinking about as I'm taking it apart about how I'm gonna put it back together again. And when I start to do that, the job goes much, much better and much, much easier and quite a bit cleaner here, as a matter of fact. So we're just gonna continue on with this. Well, on this side over here, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove my oil line coming from my fire right safety valve to my fuel pump. That way I can leave this whole section tied together, my electrical side and everything when I go to take this apart. Just on a, uh, on a service note for service people, right? When I'm looking down inside here at this brass fittings down in here, I can see that these brass fittings are very, very dull and my copper piping inside is very, very dull. That's a sign of an exhaust leak inside this particular piece of equipment and that's what's formed that haze on there. So we wanna make sure, you know, we got an exhaust leak in this unit someplace and so we have a leaking heat exchanger, but we also have an exhaust leak that we need to figure out where it's leaking at and we need to address that issue. Okay, so here I am. I'm gonna put my backup wrench on here. And then I, with my 12 millimeter wrench, I can go ahead and easily pop that flare nut free. Here we go. I'm gonna take these three screws off the bottom right here. I'm gonna take this next panel off. Okay, and there goes my next panel out of the way right there. With my extension, with, with my plug-in cord and everything, I'm gonna set this all out of the way so it's not an issue. Uh, a lot of times at this point, I actually like to pick it up and put it up on the table. Um, it just makes it easier for me. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to go after, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pull the burner. So I'm going to start out by pulling these three screws out right here. That's going to be the first thing, and then I'm going to get down inside here. I have three large hex heads down here next. Next, I'm going to come up above. I'm going to pull this piece off next using a standing mat or a kneeling mat like this will help you out and will give you much more longevity in your career. Okay, now that I got that one loosened up, I'm gonna go over here to the next one down here. There she goes. I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna hit this next one up that's right here. And this particular one, I'm gonna go ahead and just remove it also. Let's make sure that we pull the green ground wire free down here. There we go, and that's really easy to forget. And if you don't pull that wire, when you go to slip that burner out, that wire's gonna get taut, you're gonna have to put the burner back in. So make sure you always pull the ground wire because you gotta remember, green is always ground, white is neutral, black is hot, L1, red is hot, L2 for 240. It's important that you always remember that you never send a line voltage down a ground wire or down a neutral wire. Okay, I got that screw off there. I'm gonna take my left hand, gonna put it on the top of the burner, push the burner straight, take my right hand, stick it right in there. I'm gonna spin that other jam nut off of there. And I got the whole burner housing in my hand. Okay, so here's my heat exchanger right here. Boy, I got a lot of green powder inside here. And I'm gonna look inside this heat exchanger to see if I can figure out where it's been leaking at. I'm going to take my screwdriver, my pointer, and I'm going to point it in here and we can see where the hydronic fluid has been leaking out right over here in this heat exchanger and our mounted debris laying down inside. That's a sign of a very, very small leak or, you know, some type of leak in the heat exchanger. So when you're going on a service call and they think that they maybe have a leaking heat exchanger, you always need to pull the burner just like I did right there and look inside that heat exchanger. And if you see that 
line in there where some type of fluid has been running down inside there, then th that's another key to the fact that you might have a leaking heat exchanger. But the only way to really prove that the heat exchanger is leaking is to do the pressure test like we've done. So we've confirmed this visually and through the pressure test, so we're definitely on the right track. Okay, so now we're just down here to the heat exchanger and the thermistors. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull these thermistors. That's the A thermistor, which is the control thermistor. This is what runs the piece of equipment. The thermistor on this side over here, it is the T thermistor. And this is our secondary aquastat thermistor, which puts us in the fact that we do not need to have a strap on aquastat on this piece of equipment. So we're just gonna continue to strip this particular piece of equipment down. This is pitch black right now, but we will definitely be able to clean this up. So now I'm just going to go ahead and pull my bolts off of here. Excuse me, my nuts. There's the heat exchanger. I did notice that when I picked this heat exchanger up to set it on the floor here, that it's really, really heavy. So that weight is probably that mat down below the insulator pad is probably saturated with hydronic fluid. Um, I look at the top, there's a lot of um, soot and condensate in here and we got a lot of weight in here. And if we have a lot of weight in here, it probably means that the piece of equipment has not been running very efficiently. And when I look in this insulator bonnet right here and I see all that soot inside there like that, that also says to me, I got something wrong with my triangle of fire. It, do I have excess fuel inside there? Am I lacking combustion air? Is my fuel pump pressure not correct? And so these items are all gonna need to be addressed as I bring this piece of equipment back online and get ready to return it to the customer. These are the baffles right here. And these baffles, Look at, the, look at the amount of material come off of the baffles right there. Holy freaking cow, right? My new system is going to come with new baffles in my heat exchanger. And so I can always pull these old baffles and um, clean them up. And then I have some backup baffles. It is a warranty item. This piece of equipment is six years old. So 50% of the cost of the heat exchanger is going to be paid by tell you Tommy and rural energies and I need to hang on to this heat exchanger until I get paid for it because the factory might want that back and so what I do is I'm just going to write my warranty claim number on a sharpie felt pin on the front edge right here put the date on there that I worked on it and set it back on my shelf someplace and then when I get paid for it I can dispose of it at that time.